Okay. Hello, this is Mary Welty. I'm a nurse practitioner at Northwestern, and um, today I'm going to be talking about fatty liver disease uh, so that you can understand what fatty liver disease is. So what I'm going to talk about is what is fatty liver disease, what are the major causes of fatty liver disease, and how do we improve fatty liver disease in this country. Um, so I'm going to start out with some education. Uh, first, we're going to talk about alcoholic liver disease. Alcoholic liver disease moves to fatty liver disease. And how do you get alcoholic liver disease? It's significantly by alcohol consumption. Uh, it is if a male drinks more than 21 drinks per week, if a female drinks more than 14 drinks per week. And then I guess the definition is you need to know what is a drink. Um, so one drink consumes 12 ounces of beer, which is one can of beer five ounces of wine, or one and a half ounces of spirits, whether it's gin, whiskey, vodka, and each of those uh, deliver 12 to 14 grams of alcohol, so that is considered to be one drink. What's interesting is, like wine, for example, when you sit down with a bottle of wine, uh, most people don't pour just five ounces and then put the rest of the bottle away. They usually consume the whole bottle of wine. So if you're sharing it with somebody, you are then consuming somewhere between three and four drinks uh, just with that one bottle of wine. Um, so that's something to be concerned about when you're uh, looking at how much alcohol you are consuming. The other thing is, is that, which is a major issue and in coming in this country is fatty liver disease, and it's not related to alcohol. And fatty liver disease can have, it's called steatitosis or inflammation of the liver. And um, it can have no injury to the liver. And then there is NASH, which causes inflammation to the liver and causes injury to the liver. The alcoholic, delivered, alcoholic liver disease in this country, there are 15 million people that abuse or overuse alcohol in the USA. 90% of these will develop fatty liver disease and a moderate use with another risk factor. So a lot of them are not only using alcohol, but then they have other, other liver diseases or liver risks that causes for, uh, further things. Uh, the non-alcoholic liver disease is most common, and it's a chronic liver disease in the United States. It is the fourth most common reason for liver transplant in this country, and we, in the next tw 10 to 20 years, will be the most common reason for liver transplant in this country. Up to 20 to 40 percent of the adults in this country have uh, fatty liver disease and 6 million children. The prevalence of NAFTL and NASH is that there's too much that by 2020, there will be too much fat in the liver, greater than 30% of the adults and 13% of the children. Uh, fat plus significant injury is NASH and 3 to 4% of all adults and 15 to 20% of obese adults and 25 to 70% of the people having bariatric surgery today have uh, NASH. So the natural history of fatty liver, liver disease starts out as a fatty liver moves to steatohepatitis, which is inflammation of the liver. Then you move from inflammation plus scarring, which is fibrosis. Then you move from the fatty liver or inflammation to cirrhosis, and then move to cryptogenic so that the liver has cirrhosis and really can't tell what the reason is for that fatty liver disease or what the reason is for that disease. There are many risk factors, mostly happens in middle-aged people, you know, in their 40s and 50s, mostly happens to people, uh, females more than males. It usually happens with overweight people. Uh, they have some kind of inflammation in their liver. Uh, these are the other things that can cause more inflammation and more risks that happen to do with fatty liver. There are four major issues that uh, are risk factors that are for fatty liver. One is obesity. The second one is type 2 diabetes. Uh, the, second one, the third one is dyslipidemia. And the fourth is metabolic syndrome. There are other emerging uh, diseases that are becoming risk factors for fatty liver. Some of them are polycystic ovary syndrome, hypothyroidism, obstructive sleep apnea, hypopituitarism, hypogonadism, and pancreatic duodenal resection. These are some of the medications that are causing risk factors for fatty liver disease. Uh, the NAFTA fibrosis score, telling where you, what kind of scarring you have on your liver, can be calculated, and um, you can be calculated on this website. The lifestyle uh, interventions that need to be happen, the major thing that can happen or needs to happen in order to help with getting rid of fatty liver disease is weight loss. 
and losing weight um, is the most important thing that you can do along with increasing your physical exercise. 9.3% of weight loss improves in the steatosis, necrosis, and inflammation, and not the fibrosis. 3 to 5% weight loss improves steatosis, but more is needed to improve inflammation. And alcoholic consumption, the people that have that are heavy in intake, should be avoided. And it should be light intake, which is less than one one day per week, and may have benefits. So there's a lot of people that are consuming lots of alcohol, or anybody that has a diagnosis of fatty liver disease should really consider not consuming alcohol. Um, patients with fatty liver disease should have evaluations by a hepatologist, which is a liver doctor, so that the severity of the liver disease can be established. Weight loss is the major effort that you have to do to improve your liver. Um, and it is important not only to lose the weight, but to maintain the weight loss is the most important. And also decreasing the alcohol consumption. The best thing is not to have any alcohol at all. Obesity is excessive weight that may impair health. And how do you measure if someone is obese? It's done by what's called body mass index. It's a calculated number. And the normal for normal weight, the body mass index should be 18.5 to 24.9. Being overweight is 25 to 29.9. And um, obesity is 30 or greater. According to WHO, uh, as of 2005, 1.6 billion adults over 15 years of age are overweight. 400 million are obese. Um, projects by 2015, which all this hasn't been calculated, but they believe that 2.3 billion people will be overweight and 700 million people will be obese in this country, in this world. The simple equation when you eat more, then you use, it's stored in as your body is fat. If you take your current weight, and if you're a male and you multiply by 12, that equals the amount of calories you need to maintain your weight. If you are female and you multiply by 10, it equals the amount of calories you need to maintain your weight. So for example, let's just say that you're 150 pounds. If you multiply, by, and you're a female, and you multiply by 10, then to maintain your weight, is 1,500 calorie diet per day, which is very difficult to maintain. And what you have to understand is to lose one pound, you need to deficit 3,500 calories out of your diet. So if you were at 1,500, let's say your average is 1,500 calories and you're trying to lose one pound, you, in order to lose that pound in a week, you would have to decrease your calories to 1,000 every single day for seven days in a week, seven days in a week to lose one pound. So exercise plays a factor uh, in trying to help uh, with weight reduction because exercise does burn off calories. But people are, I think you'd be surprised at the amount of calories that you actually get to consume more of uh, if you do 30 minutes of exercise, as, I, as this equation tells you before. There are a bunch of different exercise activities, whether it's walking, bicycling, running, rowing, whatever. But on average, you know, if, um, a male person weighing about 190 pounds, if he does 30 minutes of exercise, he can add another 245 calories into his diet. Uh, so if you th if you take that and you figure that if you stayed at your t 1500 calorie diet, uh, you would probably be able to lose a pound if you consistently did those 30 minutes every single day. So it is difficult to uh, not not to gain weight and to uh, maintain your weight loss. So I'll have to use myself as an example. And um, I have been overweight my entire life. I was 160 pounds at age 11. Um, my mother had me in Weight Watchers at age 11, and I think it took me 16 weeks to lose 10 pounds. Uh, I continued to gain weight throughout my um, time. I obviously was consuming more calories than necessary. Um, at the age that I was growing up with, I really wasn't into a lot of sports and things. I was mostly into music, so I'm sitting on my on my butt practicing my piano many hours, but that didn't help me burning a lot of calories. So I actually became a diabetic in 2003, and I was on a total of 70 units of Lantus and oral medication. And I needed to know that 
I had to do something, otherwise I was going to hit, become sick and have further medical problems. So I have been um, actively successful in losing 240 pounds. I have maintained the weight, it'll be almost a year in October, and have added a lot of exercise into my program. Um, so I've learned that the most important thing is to maintain uh, my diet. Uh, I don't deviate very much from my diet. Uh, I continue to eat the same amount of foods every single day uh, and don't eat a lot of things that I'm not supposed to. Um, it's very difficult. I had gone to a psychologist when I was before I started trying to lose weight. And a comment that he had made to me that I kind of had stick to that is that people that lose 100 pounds or more really have to eat the same six or seven things to maintain their weight for the rest of their life. And basically, that's what I've done for the last year to help maintain my life. I don't feel that it's difficult. I don't feel that um, it's not anything that I can continue to strive for the rest of my life, but it's very necessary. But it's great to know that I'm no longer on any insulin. I'm no longer on any oral meds. My hemoglobin A1C is normal at 5.2. And I think that's the most important thing. And that's also prevented me from having fatty liver disease. Um, if, and uh, I think that's most important for everyone to consider uh, when, they're, when they're overweight and when they have fatty liver disease. 